I find that in practice people look too little to principal stresses. Now why do I like them so much? Because I have a feeling of stresses and also when something is going wrong in a numerical analysis, you will see a lot of noise in your stresses. And showing a shading is not too bad, but showing really these directions of the principal stress, showing these crosses, and when that is regular, that you know the computation has been very, very nicely. Something that they always point, point out to, or to students also on courses, look at these principal stresses. Well, to the left you have them for a, a smooth cone and to the, uh, to the right for, for, a small, for a rough cone. Another thing, being also important for pile driving, of course, when you have displacement piles, what is the effect of the displacement, of the horizontal displacement? Whether it is a cone or a horizontal displacement, due to pile driving, you will have some horizontal stress increase. Now we have done here analysis and you can see that it depends just a bit on the stiffness of the soil, but basically you are getting additional uh, horizontal stresses. I'm coming to the most challenging part now. I have told you something about the, uh, the method, the dynamic analysis, I've told you something about the quasi-static analysis that we did, but the challenging thing is to incorporate the water. We did incorporate the water indirectly when we did the cone penetration test. We did an undrained analysis, but that was indirectly. Now we want to do it fully directly. We want to have dynamic generation and dissipation of pore pressures. Of course, then we have to extend our equations. We will need we will need Darcy's law. And we are using Darcy's law now in a, I, I see this as a Darcy's law, but we have the accelerations in it. W is the acceleration of the water, W dot, W is the velocity of, of the water, the true velocity of the water, and V, that is the velocity of the soil skeleton. So we have two different velocities, and we have two different accelerations. We have two different, uh, mass density. We have the mass density of the fluid and we have the mass density of the mixture. We have the porosity that is coming in. So this is the equilibrium equation. And then finally we need continuity and we need the constitutive law, everything. So I'm not going too much in detail, but you have to consider these equations. Also you have to consider boundary equations. Now we have boundary equations not only boundary conditions, not only on the soil skeleton, but also on the, on the water. And what you basically do, whether it is a finite element method, or an MPM, or it could be SPH, you have differential equations, and you turn them into matrix equations. That is what we do. And uh, I was very interested to see, as a first results now, something on the pore pressures. And classically what we have in uh, geotechnical engineering, we, we, we all know that the target solution of one-dimensional consolidation. Now what is happening if we are dropping, so to speak, this surface, surface load? So it's only a very small surface load, only one kilopascal, but we could have taken a 10. But what is happening, to be more realistic, I think, for geotechnical engineering, what is happening if we are dropping it on the soil? Well, then we have a shock wave going down. In fact, we have two shock waves. One in the water, and we have one shock wave in the, uh, in the soil skeleton. And that's what I want to show you. I show you first now the uh, results for the shock wave in the water. And we did this analysis not in a clay. In a clay, it takes, well, before you have consolidation, it may take years. But we did it here in the sand, and here you see a relatively impermeable sand with uh, the coefficient of permeability 10 to, the minus, uh, 10 to the power minus 5, and this is a more permeable sand. Now, if you have a, this, this more permeable sand, then things are more complex, but here when it is impermeable, then the shock wave is penetrated here after just a fraction of seconds here, after some milliseconds here, further milliseconds, 
that is a sharp front. On top, you have the pore pressures, and below you have nothing. But now here, we have in addition, we have also a bit of, uh, of flow, because the soil is more permeable. And then you see in our results that uh, we are getting uh, not a, yeah, a dis, disrupted shockwave, we are getting a more con continual thing. Now this is unique, I have never seen anybody else being able to model these things. But we will need it when we are having dynamic action in saturated soil. I'll show you now what is happening in time, but before I go there, uh, take care. Here you take a boundary, and in reality such a boundary is not a strong boundary, but it's, such an old, it's just another soil layer. We have introduced here a hard boundary, and then you will need absorbing boundaries to absorb the shock wave, otherwise they will deflect. So, I'm not going further on this reflecting or these absorbing boundaries, but I'm just showing you results that you well know. The analytical solution of consolidation, and we also we get it dynamically. In the beginning there may be small differences because the dynamical effect is, is not in here, but there are small differences in the very beginning. And then we get exactly again the Tasaki solution of uh, one dimensional consolidation. Of course that was small deformations, but the basic thing of the method is that we are able to model large deformations. And here I'm showing you now the mesh, and uh, here we have the soil. And at the top, I am incre increasing my pore pressures. So P is a pore pressure, and uh, well, this is one meter. This is, I would say, this is the quasi-static solution, just a gravity solution. But I'm increasing that to 20. And when I'm increasing the pore pressure to 20, then it should get an uplift. The soil should come up because of uh, my pore, high pore pressures here. Again, the material is simple. It's a more cool of law. That is what we have done so far. I said you already. Advanced uh, constitutive modeling is on the way. The notch that we put in here is just for showing you that there is some, some movement. Huh? So when we increase it first to slightly below 20 kilopascal, you see a bit of uplift and you see distortion here. But when we go further, just beyond 20, here we went to 21. Dynamically, it's possible to go to, to 21. And you see the particles coming up. These are large deformations. So we have the effect of pore pressure being combined with large deformations. To the right, you see the, the pore pressures as we computed it. Boundary conditions, they are a bit difficult now because we do have boundary conditions on the uh, pore pressures as well. Not going to go into it too deeply. We have a challenging thing coming, and that is what I would like to show you. And this is a special interest now of Deltares. So in the Netherlands we have more than 400 kilometers of embankments and dikes, but sea dikes. On top of that, we have the river embankments. But in contrast to the, uh, the sea defenses that we saw from Japan, uh, all these dams are earthen dams, and in effect, they are a bit flatter even. Typically, this is one to four. This is so it, it's a tangent, the tangent angle is 0.25. And uh, the major problem that we are facing in the future is that we have to reinforce our dikes. Of course, we have to increase them, and everybody is talking about an increase of one meter, but also the waves are getting heavier. And during a storm, the wave attack will be much heavier. So at the moment, we do have a protection, mostly of bituminous concrete. So below the mean sea level, you have the big stones, above the big sea level you tend to have bituminous concrete, impermeable. Sometimes we use a permeable material. material. Uh, but the bituminous concrete is getting older and more brittle, losing ductility, and at the same time the waves are getting uh, stronger. So 
So we will have to improve all our diets. And that's why we are doing, of course, in situ testing to see what is the quality of the, of the bituminous concrete. And on top of that, we have this pro project that we want to analyze it. Now, in analyzing uh, the stability of such a sea defense dike, you, the most important thing at the moment is the wave attack. It's not only the wave attack, it's also by a retreating wave that you may have uplift under the impermeable material. And finally, at some dikes, you may have erosion due to um, simply due to drag forces on the material. Now, the plans are that some dikes, they will get even bituminous concrete on top. Other dikes that will not be overtopped flooding that much, they, uh, they, they, they will have to do with a, with a grass cover, but we want to analyze also this topic of erosion numerically in the future. At the moment, not. At the moment, we are focusing on the wave attack. So I'm showing you now the first results of the wave attack. By the way, it is, of course, again dynamic, and uh, we are getting the forces from uh, CFD, computational fluid dynamics uh, calculations. Finally, we also want to model with MPM, we want to model the water. But at the moment, we are getting our results from uh, this volume of fluid method, not by MPM, and that's where we are getting this distribution and also this load. Now, of course, the loads are cyclic. Cyclic loading, I think that is a challenge. Especially the waves, they come and go, and it is such a long term, so our uh, modeling of cyclic loading is very, very important. I saw in my session yesterday, I saw the model of uh, Boca being used. I appreciate that model very, very much, but of course, that is then say for earthquake engineering, where you have maybe 50 strokes, but we may have a thousand. So this is also a challenge to continue research on uh, cyclic loading. It is all 3D what we are what we are doing. So you, you can see it here. So in this case, we are uh, simulating just a disk of, of the soil, and here we have the bituminous concrete, typically with a thickness of 30 centimeter can also be in some cases 20 centimeter, but for the analysis we use 30 centimeter. Again, the soil is modeled similarly by more Coulomb. We are working, as I said, on more advanced constitutive models. Uh, boundary conditions, well, we have to take care, of course, that we have absorbing boundaries for the dynamics. Now, I'm showing you here pore pressures, excess pore pressures. And the excess pore pressures, they come and go with the waves. And the excess pore pressures, they, it's not completely undrained. There is some dissipation, there is some flow also during the period. The sand is very impermeable as a rule, so we are considering the total effect of flow and partly undrained behavior as well. But the final aim is to see the deformations. And, uh, here you see then uh, results for 10 waves coming and you see that we have in each wave some remaining soil deformation. So in color you see the soil deformation. Finally here we go to a soil deformation of the impact point here. We have 5 centimeters. I will show that to you. You see also some deformation here. You also see that our boundaries <coughs> are a bit too close, but do not forget we are just preparing things for the future. Eh? We want to go on with this project for the com coming two years at least, and we will do new analysis where we take the boundaries a bit, a bit wider. You know, you have the five centimeter that I was uh, indicating. And finally, I'm showing you a real profile. So this is a sea dike, and what I said, we have, over here we have the big stones, this is being sea level, here we have the bituminous concrete where the wave attack is uh, coming in, and you see that as a result of heavy waves, there is damage. That is one, what we want to predict, or what we want to prevent in the future. Here we have the grass, some dikes, they will get a complete cover with bituminous concrete. <coughs> because uh, 
uh, security, safety is important. So it is a project, I would say, on geo-install. Four years in total, we have been working on for two years. But after the first successes, this sea defense thing has been added. And we are working on the wave attack. We will also be working soon, I hope, in one or two years, on erosion, but it has not started, started yet. We are working with a team, and, uh, well, I would say the team is important to function. Our team does not have any uh, internal friction. But of course you are working in a group, you are working in a group with companies, industries, and you are having universities. That is an experience. So if there is friction, I would say it is external friction, it is not internal friction. But I did like the picture and I wanted to show it to you. So thank you for your attention. Engineering. Thank you, Professor Kim.